Number 17. Letter A. If the first order maximum for pure wavelength light falling on double slits is at an angle of 10 degrees, at what angle is the second order maximum? So since we're talking about maximums, we need the uh, diffraction right formula over here for double slit, right, maximum. So this is going to be the distance between the slits multiplied by the sine of the angle will be equal to the order multiplied by the wavelength. Now we're dealing with first order and second order. So we're probably going to need like two equations, right? So this is going to be the distance, now here's the thing, the distance between the slits does not change depending upon your order, all right? It doesn't change. It's going to be a constant for the experiment, all right? And this angle we'll deal with in a second, but this would be like the first order uh, value, and then this would be the first order, let's say, wavelength, okay? Now, the angle here, this is also for the first order because that angle is going to be different, right? It says 10, it actually gave it to us, so I shouldn't have skipped it, but it gave it to us, so we can plug that on in, okay? So here's the thing. We have a couple of different ways that we can deal with this problem, right? But let's write D, and also, by the way, is the wavelength going to change? No, the wavelength is also going to be constant. So we can have D sine theta 2 is equal to then M2 wavelength, now, it does not matter which one you solve for. You can solve it for the distance, or you can solve for the wavelength. Both are constant, right? So maybe what we'll do is this. Let's do it this way. Let's divide out the sine of theta for the first order. Realize that this d now, okay, that we just solved for, is equivalent to this. So now what I'm going to do is plug that into my second equation over there, okay? So this is now going to be m1 lambda all over sine theta 1, okay, then sine theta 2, and this is equal to m2 times lambda. So now notice, you got two lambdas on the same side, they're all multiplied together, so we'll see you later lambda, okay? Now let's consider what we're solving for. It says, what is the, uh, at what angle is the second order maximum? So we're solving for this, right? So I want to get rid of these terms now on over to the right-hand side, so simply cross-multiply this on over and to the top. Bring this on down. Well, don't bring the red X. Right, and that's basically now going to be more or less solved. In other words, this is going to be sine of theta 2 now is equal to M2 times sine of theta 1 all over M1. But again, we need to find just theta, so take the inverse sine of both sides. Okay, get rid of the sine over there, and that's now your equation. So theta 2 here is going to be equal to inverse sine of m2, which is the second order, right, max, so there's going to be 2, times then the sine of the first, right, max, which was 10 degrees, they told us, divided by then m1, which was the first order max, so that's why that's a 1. So it's basically just, right, sine, interestingly enough, it's going to be inverse sine, and I forgot to plug in my inverse sine there, All right, so it's going to be inverse sine of 2 times sine of 10. And I get about 20.3, okay? So there's going to be 20.3 uh, degrees. So that's the answer to letter A, okay? Now letter, uh, letter B, what is the angle uh, of the first minimum? Okay, so now it, wants, now it wants the minimum, okay? So basically what we have to do now is do a... I mean, there's several ways we can probably approach this, but uh, what I'm going to do here is here's the minimum now formula. Okay, that's destructive interference. So let me just write that out now. So this is going to be B. This was A. So this is going to be now D sine theta is equal to now M plus one half. I don't really like this formula because M now the first order is going to have an M of zero. All right, but that's the formula that they give you. So uh, what I realize now is we're going to basically do the same process. Okay, what is the angle of the first minimum? I already solved this. Remember, the Ds are still the same. It doesn't matter. The distance between the slits, no matter if you're dealing with max, min, or whatever, whatever order, they're all the same. So I already solved this. I already did the work here. So I'm going to plug that on in, okay? The only thing I want to consider here is that now this is for the first order. All right, here for the first, this is the angle for the minimum, okay? Well, they're both min, M and M. Ooh, M and M sound really good right now. Um, so... Uh, how am I going to do? Eh, let me try to keep the colors. All right, let me try to keep the colors. So now what I'm going to do is going to be M. I'm plugging it in for D, right? This whole thing for D. This is M1 lambda divided then by sine theta. 
I'll leave that in blue, that's theta one, but I'll leave it in blue, okay? This is the constructive one. Multiplied by then sine of theta, that's in black now, okay? This is then m plus one half lambda. Now notice the same thing's gonna happen to the lambdas, we'll see later, okay? Remember, we're after solving for this theta. So what we're gonna do now is bring the blue on over, it's literally the same type of calculation, bring the m1 on down, okay? And now what we're gonna have is we're gonna have sine of theta, but you know we gotta get rid of the theta, right? We're gonna take the inverse sine of this side, okay? I'm trying to run through this one, because the algebra here is just, it's the same as what we just seen. So this is then going to be m plus one half, all right, m plus one half times then the blue sine theta, all then divided by now m1, okay? Now here's the thing, when you know, this is why I don't like the formula, I would rather have them have put in a subtraction sign in here, but you know, whatever. Um, so what we're gonna now do is we're going to, uh, basically, since I'm running out of space, I'm gonna just start to plug stuff in. So the first order minimum, you might plug in a one here for m, no. The first order minimum occurs here at m is zero. You gotta be very careful with that, all right? Um, that's just the way the formula works. Uh, if this was a subtraction sign, then I would have plugged in one, but you know, I don't, I don't know what formula you'll be using, so I'm just using this one from the text. Um, so this is sine of theta. So the theta here in blue was 10 degrees, right? So erase that and write in then 10. And then the M1 down there, the first order max is a value of one. So now we can basically calculate this. So the inverse sine now of 0.5 essentially multiplied by now sine of 10. So if you notice at the end, this is basically, right, two times the sine, and then this was a half now. All right, times the sine of 10. So this is then going to be equal to now 4.98 degrees. All right, so that's the answer to letter B. Letter C, what is the highest order maximum possible here? All right, so what we're gonna do is I'm gonna write another formula for the constructive because they're dealing with maximum, okay? So this is gonna be D sine theta equals then uh, M lambda. Now I want the max angle in here and I want the max M, okay? So in other words, um, I want to find the highest order maximum. My goal here is to solve for this. That's the goal, okay? Now what I'm gonna do is I'm literally gonna do the same exact type of process here. I'm gonna take this since I already solved it for D and I'm gonna plug it on in for that D, okay? So this time I'm gonna write M1 and uh, since they're not the same. So this is gonna be M1 lambda all divided by sine of theta of the first order max, multiplied by then the sine of theta max is gonna be equal to m max, m sub max times lambda. Now notice the lambdas will go bye-bye, okay? And now I'm after solving for m max. So actually this equation now is solved if I just erase these, right? If I just literally erase them, this is now my equation, okay? So here it is. Now all we need to do is basically plug in some of the numbers. So M1, the first order maximum, well that is a one, boom. The sine of theta one, well that was sine of theta of 10, right, because that was it for the first one. And then that's multiplied by now sine of theta max, well what's the maximum theta possible? Well it's 90 degrees, okay? And this is then equal to M max. So this is basically just one divided by now sine of 10. Or about, so the answer here, M max, now you gotta be careful of this, careful. M max, it comes out to be a decimal, okay? 5.76, but you always have to round this down, okay? This is the maximum theoretical possible value. Now the, M's va the M value can only be integers, but if the max is 5.76, how in the world can we get to six? We can't. This is the max. However, we cannot end at a fraction, okay? So the highest order maximum possible is then the lowest integer, okay? The, the next lowest integer to this. You're always gonna round this down essentially. So the answer would be five. Hopefully that makes sense because all these maximums occur at interval values, all right? At uh, integer values, I meant. Um, so you have to have an integer. You can't round it up because the theoretical maximum was this 5.76 fraction. You can't round up, gotta round it down. Guys, thanks for tuning in. Hope that helped. I'll see you in the next one, all right? Help us out also if you can by subscribing and liking. All right, check out some more of the videos too, by the way. 
Got a whole bunch of other subjects, chem, precalculus, whole bunch of other stuff coming. Take a look at the, uh, even if you're not using the OpenStax books, it's free. Go to the website, download the book, find a similar problem. I bet you you find a similar identical one. All right, and then we'll solve it for you. We'll see you soon. Take care.